What's up, my galeras out here in Singapore? And thank you so much for joining me on my Night Owl podcast, you guys. I'm really excited to be here because it gives me a chance to sort out my thoughts. It gives me a chance to really talk to you guys about the things that, you know, even I go through, even though um, I seem to be kind of peaceful at all times. I do have those moments where the world kind of shocks me or people in my life kind of disappoint me. And it takes me a little while to kind of process all of those things. But rather than spew all of this anger and hatred on the podcast, I would rather actually take some time and process it on my own and then come back to you with the insights that I have as a result. So it's kind of what I've done over the last couple of days, a couple of things that have been bothering me that I wasn't really ready for, but it's all good because eventually I learn a little bit more about myself. So for those of us who are light workers, who are trying really hard to, you know, um, take some time, understand the world around us, and try really hard to give people the benefit of the doubt, be as compassionate and as caring as possible, it still seems like we have a little bit of ego that we need to deal with as well. So a lot of times when I get through um, a difficulty of some sort that maybe changes the way I see my reality because maybe I was missing some kind of information somewhere, I was assuming that everything was okay, that I was in a good place and come to find out that somebody has a bad opinion of me or has some kind of an an understanding that is contradictory to what it is that I believe in, it takes me a minute (laughs) to kind of settle uh, the understanding, the new understanding that I have now to what I thought was going on. So let me be a little bit more um, clear on this because I've told you before I'm going to try really hard not to be vague so you you guys can actually really follow along. Um... A couple of days ago, I had a run-in with a colleague, and they were having a tough time outside of, you know, our work or whatever. They were having a tough time in life in general, and I had no idea. So I was thinking, you know, our interactions were still the same. Our interactions were pretty good, in fact, and I thought that because our interactions were doing pretty well, that things were good between us until one day this person came to me and said, you know what, I don't like this, this, and this, and this. It was like a laundry list of things they didn't like. And I was kind of shocked because, like I said, I had assumed, you know, no news is good news. I had assumed that everything was fine. And um, when they came to me with that information, it took me a second and I was kind of thrown off balance. And what I did next was to apologize for, you know, having upset them in any way because that was obviously not my intention. And I had unintentionally, you know upset them somehow with my existence. So it took me a minute to actually ask questions and find out what it is that I had done. But in that space of time, because they were upset in the moment, they weren't able to answer any of the questions for me. So here's what happened next. I did my best. I apologized. I asked for what it was specifically that I had done wrong. And when I did not get the answer, all I could do was let them be. I had apologized as many times as I could. I wanted to let them know that I was here for them no matter what, because I believe that any friendship is only tested through these these interactions that aren't that great, that have the potential to really destroy people, but I try my best to stick it through. I try my best to show support regardless because I think that's what we need in order to get through these little speed bumps in a friendship or in any relationship for that matter. And while I gave them some space and when I came back to see them again it seemed as if nothing had happened they had kind of glossed over the whole thing they didn't did not want to revisit it obviously so I did not bring it up but it's almost as if nothing happened and I know you guys have been through those situations before in your life because god damn it so have I I've been through those situations so many times in my life uh my entire marriage was like that actually I would get into a situation where my ex-husband was upset with me for something And he would jump down my throat, he would scream and yell, he would slam the door, he would leave. And when they came back, it was like, nothing ever happened. It's almost like they went to the grocery store, like any other day, and came back and everything was fine. But there is something inside of you that kind of slowly breaks over time, because you don't get a chance to actually speak about the things that you would like an answer to. It's almost like, you hurt my feelings, you destroyed my life, you're ruining my life, you're, you know... um, you're in my way, you're a pain in my ass, whatever. And after you've said all of those hurtful things, the person is trying to apologize and figure out where they went wrong. And you leave and come back and it's almost like, oh, wiped clean. It's almost as if you didn't say any of those things, but the damage has already been done. And I think that it's difficult to understand and it's difficult to maneuver through because the problem that we did not speak about is still there. 
which means it has its potential to rear its head again at some point, any point in life, um, which causes a little bit more distance between the two people. And it also causes people to um, be on their guard more. So the first instinct for me was, you know what, I'm not opening up to nobody else ever again. I'm not talking to anybody. I don't want to speak to anybody. I kind of want to disappear from the world. And my first instinct was to sleep it off, which I can't afford to do because I have a daughter that depends on me. I have a household to run. I have people in the house that I need to make sure eat. And uh, in order for them to eat, I need to make money to be able to buy food to cook. So there's a lot of things that are hinging on me. I kind of I kind of run the show here. And that's okay. I'm, I'm good with that. I'm happy to have that responsibility. But when something comes and disrupts your energy to this extent, it becomes really difficult to kind of get that balance back. And that's where I need to be very cognizant. It's where I need to go back inside and think about, okay, well, what does all of this mean? So here's why I wanted to do this podcast today. I want to explain to you my thought process. How do I process any of this? Because it still doesn't make sense to me. It's still not solved. It's still there ready to you know pop up whenever. Um, but I have to go on like everything's okay. So for me, I have to go back inside and think about, you know, okay, well, what does this actually mean? What story am I telling my, them? Sorry. What story am I telling myself about what the, the outcome of this whole situation is? What does it mean to me? What does it mean for me as a person? Does it mean I'm a bad person? Does it mean I'm insensitive? Does it mean that I am the kind of person that, you know, just kind of stomps my way around, steamrolls over anything in my way, and I do what I want, regardless of what other people um, need in their lives? Am I really blind to what other people need? Am I not asking the right questions? Am I not being cognizant of everybody around me, the people at least that are in my direct path? So I had to think about that for a little while, and I had to really understand that I think I'm doing a pretty good job. I'm human. I do make mistakes. But unless somebody tells me what's broken and where, I don't know how to fix it. I don't even know how to begin to fix it. So I had to think about it again. And when I sat down for a minute and really understood that this person is frustrated, I had to include the fact that it may not be just my interaction with them. It may have been something else that started off. Let me give an example. When my dad was out of work, um, so many times in my childhood he would be out of work and he was frustrated with himself and he really wanted to be able to make money and you know provide for the family. As much as I don't enjoy being around him, I know what his character was like and I know that the pattern was when he was upset with something outside of his life, he would come to something inside of his life that was within his control and exert his influence there. So when my dad was in a situation where, you know, unemployed, didn't have money to do basic things with he which means he can't travel he can't go do stuff like he wants to do he has to kind of he's kind of confined to the house and he's kind of chained in in one place right so in that space when he's in that kind of headspace if anything goes wrong in the house as in if there's too much noise if um if we spill something or waste something by accident everything you know boils down to money in his head he would flip out and beat the hell out of all of us because it had been festering inside of his mind. He's been upset about all these things already. And then now, by me being a kid and me dropping milk or um, by me not eating everything that was on my plate, me throwing away any food, he would flip out. Like the whole weight of all of his anger, um, the anger he had within himself about not being able to have a job, the anger he had within himself about um, not being able to do what he wants at will, all of that had been sitting inside of him quietly until something happened and triggered him and when that happened I got the brunt of all of his anger so based on that idea I get a little scared when somebody comes out of the blue and tells me hey you know what you screwed this up you fucked this up you're a pain in my ass you're in my way you're disruptive to my entire being I get nervous because I know what happens next at least based on my nervous system and my past what happens next next is it becomes violent. It becomes a situation where somebody really does take it out on me. So when I sat down and had to think about these things, I remembered all of the similar situations that I've lived through that remind me of the situation I'm going through now. And when I understood that, what I understood from all that is when the other person is really upset about things that have nothing to do with you, the slightest thing that you do could trigger them, which means you get the brunt of that that anger, that that disgust, that shame, that that guilt, all of that rolled into one comes out as anger. 
I'll give you another example. When I was doing my Arangetram with my aunt, it was already difficult to learn with my aunt. I love my aunt to death. She's a really great dancer. But when you learn a craft from somebody who is part of your family, you don't finish the class in class. It comes back home with you. And so it was very, very difficult for me because my Arangetram, all the practices were with my cousin. We both did the Arangetram together. And there were so many times where he would fight with his mother. And the minute she got upset, I knew I couldn't afford to make any more mistakes because I would bear the brunt of all of her anger because she couldn't afford to piss him off. She wanted him to finish. She didn't want him to walk away from the practice, right? She wanted him to finish. So that means what? I get it. It becomes my problem. It becomes my fault. And as much as I would like to say that I could throw it back in her face, I can't. I can't afford to. I care about that person. I can't afford to put them in their place and tell them off and, you know, show them the error of their ways because I care about that person. So it took me a minute to bounce back from the tirade that I received and understand the fact that it wasn't all me. It wasn't all me. I did something, yes, that upset them, yes. And until they're in a space where they're no longer angry, they can tell me about it. I don't know what to fix. But without all of that, to take all of my problems aside... It's more than that. There's something else going on. There's something else that's running under the current that I can't see, that I have no, you know, right to look into until they invite me in, until they tell me, hey, you know what, I'm dealing with this as well. So as much as I would like to say that I was not bothered by it, I was. And as much as I would like to say that, you know, I could poker face my way through that entire situation, I couldn't. Because my emotions are tied up in this. I care about the people that I sit with. And I care about the people that I spend time with. And it doesn't matter if I just have coffee with you one day out of the blue. Or if I have spent hours and hours with you on the phone. Or if you are a part of my family and you live with me. It doesn't matter how much time I've spent. Once I invest time and energy in you, I care. I honestly care. And it does hurt my feelings and it's not the easiest thing to maneuver, but it does take me a while to kind of process all of what has happened because I don't have the closure that I'm looking for. If you would rather gloss it over and pretend that it never happened, I don't get the opportunity to bring it up again because why? That's going to start another fight, right? And I don't want the confrontation. I don't want to upset you further. So in my quest to find answers, sometimes I have no choice but to let it go. I have no choice but to take the current moment as it is, the present moment as it is. And it is difficult, but it is doable. So for those of you out there dealing with a situation where something happened, you're not entirely sure what, but somebody was upset with you, and it seemed like it was out of the blue, but it did, it was triggered by one thing that you did. Focus on the one thing that you did and leave the rest because you don't know where all of that anger and all of that irritation and frustration was amped up from until they invite you in and tell you what's really going on. So until then, all you can really deal with is what's in front of you. You can only eat what's on your plate. You can't consume what all is going on behind the scenes. That's not for you. It's not your monkey. It's not your circus. The best you can do is focus on the present moment. So if you have any questions, please drop a line. Let me know what you're thinking. But in the meantime, you guys, try your best to sort out what is actually yours and what isn't. It will you will free up a lot of space. A lot of us carry a lot, of, a lot of baggage that doesn't actually belong to us because we're caught up in some kind of chaos that we're invited into and unknowingly we stepped right through that door and played right into their hands. And that's okay because they needed us to play a part at that moment. All the world's a stage, right? And all of us are players ranting our way upon the stage and it's okay. Once we know our place, it becomes a lot more clear and distinct. But until we know our place, we can only deal with the hand that we have in our hands right now. So I hope this made sense, you guys. I hope it gives you a little bit of relief. But like I said, please do your best to sort out what's yours and what's not. Leave the rest. It's not yours to carry. It's not your burden. It's not your problem. And as heartless as that sounds to say, sometimes that's the best way to protect your feelings and to keep from being caught up in a whirlwind of emotion that isn't yours to to carry in the first place i hope this helps love you guys bye